So sure. let's talk about screenplays. Now, screenplays are, uh, although they're dialogue, they're visual media, and they require visual writing, and that's unlike a book or a stage play, like with books, um, Screenplays focus on the visual and emotional aspects of a scene, mainly action. Novels, like some of us are novelists, so you know we have to describe thoughts and feelings. Stage plays are all verbal, so in, in screenplays, you don't express thoughts and feelings. It's all action. You're trying to move everything. So um, normally a screenplay is 90 to 120 pages. And what I've given you, I've given you a sample of my of a comedy that I've written. Comedy is typically 90 to 100 pages. And if you're writing drama, it's usually 100 to 110 pages. But normally, your script, if it's a feature, we, we, we're doing, we're talking about features here. Well, features um, shouldn't, shouldn't be more than 120 pages, OK? So you, we're all, you know, right now, you all are unexperienced writers. So what you're writing is called expect script. There are two types of spec script and a shooting script. Okay, so when you write a uh, when you write uh, a spec script, that means you're writing on a speculation that someone is going to buy your work. Okay, and shooting scripts are different because um, they're used during the production of movies. So say like you write a script and you sell it, they're going to turn your script into a shooting script that has. Um, it includes technical directions for the director, the crew, and the cast, so they can more easily perform the shoot. Okay? We clear that? So there's spec script and shooting script. So what you're gonna be doing, what you're gonna write is a spec script. Okay, so when you write your spec script, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna send that script to an, 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 a, um, someone who's gonna analyze it. And that person is gonna depend on if your script is readable. So like right now in Lyft, we have a screenplay competition. So when we're reading these scripts, we're, 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 we're determining if that's a readable script. And usually when people, I usually don't like to read people's scripts because I just, I'll tell you well, and later, they, they just turn, some things just turn me off. But what we're looking for, you have to have a clear story and it has to be attractive. That means that you have to have it, you know, it's a proper format. There's a certain format that scripts are written in and we're gonna talk about um, that, that you look for punctuation and spelling. It has to be specific. There has to be a clear voice and specific language. Screenplays are written in a specific type of language, unlike books and stage plays, okay? And fourth, it has to be economical. And what I mean by that is that you have to say everything in very, very few words. Not like a book, not like a stage play. Screenplays are succinct. They are very concise. You have to get as much out as you can so you also, I'm also have to be like a wordsmith, like an attorney. So I'm, I'm sure like, your male will probably have no problem writing that because you really have to be concise in your writing with screenplays. And less, it has to be entertaining, obviously, right? Okay, so now, so you have, uh, also, when you write the first 10 pages, usually say the first five, but the first 10 are crucial. Really the first five, because they, your story has to be so intriguing right off the bat that a person want they want to read it they 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 don't want to put it down so if you if you come flat in your first five pages you're done nobody's gonna want to gonna just talk they're gonna throw it in the trash okay so now any question if you have any questions um, you see that little chat box there put your questions there and then I'll answer your questions or you can you can stop you can unmute and stop me okay all right so let's talk about what you have, you have an idea. So all you, everybody on here has an idea for a story, right? Yeah. Okay. Your story oh, has, yes. All right. So your story has to have meaning. So you, you have an idea. What's the meaning behind your idea? Ask, I'm sorry. Ask yourself what the meaning is behind your story. All right. So all stories have a beginning a middle and an end. We call that beginning act one, the middle act two, and the end act three. Only some stories have more than uh, four, some may have four, some may have five, but typically have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So how do you get there? First, if you have an idea, outline it. You should already know what your story is before you start to write your story. So 
with a bad habit. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I think you know how that idea came to me. I was in my residency and uh, I was, uh, I was living in Detroit and I was driving down uh, the interstate and I saw this nun fly by me. She must have been doing like a hundred in an old station wagon. I hadn't seen a station wagon in a long time, but it just stayed in my mind and it etched that she became the main character for this comedy that I wrote called Bad Habits. So in my story, her name is Mary Margaret. She's really, she's a, she's a thief. And she ends up going to jail, and uh, some nuns kind of take her in, and she's scamming them because she really wants to. She's just trying to get, get a place to stay, but she ends up caring for them, and she has a conflict with a priest who wants to shut down their um, their convent, and so he they get into it, and he kicks her out, and so she to save her convent, she starts selling weed. We'll talk about that later. But, that, you know, but I knew how it was going to end. I knew that she was going to, I knew she was going to use the, the, the convent. She's going to use the nuns for her own gain. She's going to fall in love with the ladies. She's going to have a conflict with the priest. And she's going to do something to try to save their order. So I knew that that's where my story was going. And I knew exactly how she was going to save it because I saw it in my head. So outline, you don't have to have, it, it doesn't have to be a long outline, but just know how it's going to start what your media story is and how it's gonna end and that's gonna help you to write your story, okay? So the first act is the beginning and that's your setup and that's like 25% of your story. And typically uh, the first 15 to 25 pages of your script or maybe 30 is gonna be act one, all right? And this is where you grab the attention of your audience. You introduce your premise and you establish the situation for the conflict. So in Bad Habit, um, the situation for the conflict in my first act is that the priest doesn't like her. She finds out he's trying to, to, to destroy their order, so he's kicking her out because she's the one that stands up to him. She doesn't care. She's not super religious. She just, I mean, she's there uh, under false pretenses initially. So now that's her conflict. This is her setup. You know, she gets busted, she goes to jail, and then she, they take her in, and now she has conflict with this priest, so he's kicking her out. So in act, act two, that is the middle. That's going to be um, like fifty percent of your story, and this is where you complicate matters and you develop the conflict and you build some type of crisis. So, in my story, uh, she calls herself Mary, Mary Margaret. That's not her real name, but uh, so she gets kicked out and she ends up going to Texas to stay with her sister. So she goes to Texas. Her 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 brother in law hates her. They can't stand each other. So. There's conflict there. And when she's there, that's when she starts, you know, she's, she makes friends and stuff and she does things, still disguised as a nun to try to sell weed so she can make some money so they can um, make the priest chill out, okay? And in act three, that's gonna be uh, another, the other 25% of your story, that's where you resolve the conflict. So in a screenplay, you have typically, most you have three, three parts. You have act one, Act two and act three. So act three is your setup. That's where you grab the attention of your reader, grab the attention of your audience. Then you have act two, which is the meat of your story. And that's where you the conflict, all the conflict happens in the second act. And then the third act is where we have our resolve. We have our climax. We have, we have our resolve. Okay. We all clear on that? Okay. So how do we get from act one to act two, to act three. We have what we call turning points or plot points, okay? So turning points, they, they can be called plot points, transitions, action, character, crossroads, uh, but turning points drive your story. So the first turning point is gonna be at the end of act one. The next is gonna move us to act two which is where some big event or some, something dramatically happens that's gonna affect your character's life. So in Bad Habit, what affected her life, <laughs> she's getting it from the priest there, but she also gets it from her brother-in-law because he also tries to, he starts following her around and he tries to, he tells that she's selling the weed. I'm trying to get her arrested because he hates her. And there's a story behind that too. So. And then that's the first plot point or turning point. The second turning point is going to be at the end of act, it's going to be in act three. 
and this is the cli our climax or our crisis. And this forces the character to make a final decision or make a series of actions that's gonna resolve the story. So we get our resolve, hopefully, and I've seen some movies where I didn't get any resolve. I love resolving a movie. I can't stand when somebody, when there's no resolve in a movie or I'm left like upset. It's like reading a bad book. Like I read this awesome novel and I got to the end, it was like, it just deflated me, it hurt me, it bothered me for like a week and I wish I'd never read it. So, okay, are we, are we clear right now? Anybody have any questions? Are we flowing? Okay, so every story, so when you get ready to write, you're gonna make an outline. You're gonna, you're gonna know how your story's gonna start, what your conflict is and how it's gonna end. And it, it can be just as simple as three stories, in three, three lines, but you need to have something to build on so you can get to act one, act two, and act three. And if your story is dull, if you can't move in those first 10 or 15 pages, nobody, they're gonna dump your script in the trash, I promise you. Okay, so there are seven major plot points. First one, and all, and everything I'm telling you, I'm not skimming this book now. This screenwriting Bible has everything you need to know in it. So I'm, I'm coming from this, I'm kind of skimming it, but it has so much stuff in it, even how to sell your script. So, so first we have a backstory. Now my character, uh, Mary Margaret, her backstory is that, you know, she didn't have a father, her mother died, she lived with stepfather, her sister, you know, she got married, has a great life, has kids, and she was always kind of a troubled person, but the stepfather she had, it was in their house, uh, he was mean to her, um, uh, tried to sexually abuse her, so she had an issue with men, she had an issue at that point, she was very young, she didn't get to go to college, she didn't get to do the things that her sister did, so her backstory is just based on her hurt, her pain that she has from abusive men, so when she gets in this convent, and there's this priest, he's an asshole, he's a, he's a, he, he hates women too, he's a, he really wants to be a woman, he's a cross-dresser, so he hates women, he hates her, he hates outspoken women, so they hate each other, so that's her backstory, so one, every character has a backstory, two, there has to be some catalyst, the catalyst for her is him kicking her out of that convent and taking, and trying to take away from those nuns when they've done nothing to them, that's her catalyst. The big event here is when you know she gets busted, her brother-in-law ends up siding with the priest and helping the priest against her. She does raise the money, but he steals it from her. So that is gonna be a big event to hurt her. And then there's your midpoint. Um, the midpoint is her trying to negotiate with him to try to get everything back, okay? She does that, but then that moves us to a crisis. So when she does negotiate with him, and she tries to get her money back and she opens it up, there's nothing but magazine stuff. So he stole from her, okay? So then they have a showdown. That's just six, six plot point. Their showdown is they're having a, she's about to whip his ass on a stormy night. You know, she, she took something from him too. She stole his, she, he has a really cool car and she stole his car because he stole her money. So they have a showdown. He wants his car back. It's a classic car and, she, and he'll give the money back. But she wasn't giving him anything. So they have a showdown. I won't tell you what happened. So after all that, there's a realization. All that crisis is done, but she does realize, she does have a change. She has a change of heart. And we'll talk about character arcs in a minute. What happens to her is that she realizes she, you know, she's been kind of a bad person all her life, but she comes to appreciate people who love her because she really hasn't, other than her sister, you know, she's been a scammer, so she doesn't have anybody to care for her in her life. It's a really funny story. So that's the realization. So, so when we go from, Act to act, we have to have turning points. So there are seven points. So we have a backstory, we have a catalyst, we have a big event, we have a midpoint, we have a crisis, we have a showdown, and then we have a realization, okay? So are we cool? Let's see. Myrna, we're gonna get to character development in a minute, Myrna. We're gonna get there, okay? So, uh, are we cool? Can we move on from here? We, you understand acts, act, first three acts and what, what those acts are and how you move them? We can move on? Yes. All right, Jeanette, uh, can you put, are you able to put the, uh, the script up? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Kimmy's coming on. She just texted coming on late. We're gonna get into script mechanics. Oh, here's Kimmy. 
Can somebody uh, hold on a second? Let me let Kimmy in. Okay, we let somebody else in, y'all. Just hold on a second. Uh, can you take it to the first page? I'm not able to manipulate it. Okay, hey, Kimmy. Uh, Kimmy, if you can unmute yourself and uh, say hi. Hey. To see your face, your beautiful face. Another sore. <laughs> Hey, everybody. I'm so sorry. I literally am finishing up teaching class. So <laughs> I just ended my other Zoom class. So I'm going to join from my computer in a second. Okay. So while you like, you have control now, Michaela. I, I'm, for some reason, I can't move this. this. Okay, I see. Okay. How do I? Okay. Um, Kimmy, uh, what we're, we're talking about, um, we're going over this, the, the script structure acts, one, that there are three acts in a script. Um, so we'll go back, I'll go back up there with you. All right. So we're going to hit, we're going to hit um, script mechanics. Okay. Okay. So you see here, I had a, a title page here. Okay. When you're writing a script, the first page is not your title page. Your first page is the first page of your script and you, it should never be numbered. But when you have, um, when you have the proper software, your script won't, it will do that for you. It won't be numbered. All right. Hang on there. Let's see here. All right. Yep. Okay. So when we when we when we're writing a screenplay, we start with fade in. Typically, fade in is is in the far right margin. I have it in the left of mine, but it's usually in the far right margin, followed by the master scene heading. You see this? It says INT Thrift Store Night. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So, okay, usually, okay, but usually movies start with fade in and then followed by the scene heading. But some movies begin with a black screen followed by the description of sound with some superimposed words, then fade in. But for simplicity's sake, when you start your screenplay, you're going to always write fade in and it's going to be not your left, it's going to be in your far right margin, okay? Now, this INT thrift store night. That's called a scene heading. And, and they're always in caps. And they consist of three parts. That INT, which means internal, that's the camera location. The thrift store is the scene location. And then you have the time of day. Now, when you're writing this, it's either going to be internal or external. That means that the scene takes place inside or it takes place outside. Simple as that. And then the next one is going to be wherever it is. It's going to be in the thrift store. It's going to be in the bathroom. It's going to be in the grocery store. It's going to be at the library. It's wherever your scene is, okay? And daytime, never write. It's either day or night. It's not afternoon, mid-afternoon, uh, early morning. It's either day or night. And that's going to separate the amateurs from the professionals. Never, ever, 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 ever write any other time of day except day or night, period. Let's see. Got it? Yes. All right. Okay. So uh, now we do have three different types of scene headings or scene headings. Sometimes they're called slug lines. Now this is a master scene heading. Okay. And again, it's, it's just the camera angle, whether it's internal or external, whether it's inside or outside, the location, and then the time of day. And uh, we have secondary, also we have something called secondary uh, scene headings, and that's when a master scene has more than one dramatic unit, which requires a separate scene setting. So I think everybody's in Dallas, so except uh, Kimmy. So let's say we went to 
I was going to use three, four, a McDonald's. So say the scene uh, is in internal McDonald's. It could be, uh, and it's taking place at night. If we, we may have a scene in a restroom, we may have a scene in a parking lot, we may have a scene on a roof of McDonald's. So that would be a secondary thing. So you'd have to, wherever you, wherever your action takes place, if, if, if you had a fight and it started inside the restaurant, that's one thing. If it started it went, moved to the bathroom, you have to change that location. So that's, that's what the secondary um, um, scene, master scene is. And then we have um, special scene headings. So if you have like a montage, like if you want to show, uh, how many of you have seen, um, what's that movie? Um, Spike Lee is really good for doing montages. Uh, um, it's just when you show like a person, I'll say if you have a, a scene where a character's falling in love, uh, you might show them meeting in a restaurant. You may show them uh, getting her phone number. You may show them holding hands. You may show them in bed, making love for the first time. You may show them proposing to her. Then they get married, then they have a baby. But you show just a short clip. That's, called, that's a montage, okay? So that's a special scene heading. So I would write montage and I, I put all those special scenes on there. We have flashbacks, quick flashes, daydreams, um, inserts, which are also known as cutaways. When you bring something really small to a frame, like you may have a, 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 a coin, a purse full of coins, and you just want to move in on the coins, or you may have a, a, a book or a sign or a contract or a headline or something like that. Uh, or we have things that call intercuts. So if you want to do a, a bit, this is all in the book, but I'm just, just kind of showing you, giving you a little example. If you have intercuts, like you can have a phone conversation. Um, uh, it would establish a, a, the placement. Uh, or if I wanted to do a, an intercut on a, a, a camera angle, I may uh, put angle on Myrna. I might write that in there. Or I might put uh, close on Myrna or Michael or Dave. So things, stuff, stuff like that. And then, okay, so that's it. So that's the scene heading. So I probably did told you a little bit too much, but basically when you start to write your script, you start with fade in always in the right margin, not the left like I have in mind, the right margin, okay? And then right here we have Missy, uh, we have um, our master scene heading. So my scene takes place inside of a thrift store at night. That is the master scene heading and it's always in caps. And then underneath that is what we have, we call um, narrative description. This is really important. Um, this is where we introduce our characters. It should be very concise. Thank you, Jeanette. It should be super, super concise. And it does consist of three of them. It consists of little action, settings and characters, and sounds. You should have no more. It, it should always uh, be written in present tense. Even if it's a flashback, it has to be written in present tense. It's always lean. You see, I don't have a lot of words there and you only provide what is necessary to move your story along and to emphasize important actions and moments. So um, and we'll talk about the action in a minute. Uh, but if you have a lot of words there, it's like it, this is what they do sometimes. If, if, if you take, a, um, if you take a, a Sharpie and you just black out every bit of narrative stuff that you have, if you have a bricks of, and blocks of narrative, they're going to throw your script in the trash. Nobody wants to read all that. Screenplay should be super, 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 super lean. Very, very lean, okay? Um, and we call those paragraphs, but they're not really paragraphs. They should be, ideally, you want no more than four lines. One or two, perfect if you can do it, but no more than four if you can help it. And, that, that, and that's going to teach you how to write concisely as well. Um, so underneath that, you know, um, so I probably, I think I just see we did that. Um, so we're gonna, right there you see, so I have introduced my character, Missy, which also she's called Mary Margaret. She's mid 30s, she's tall, blonde, uh, lurks with a female accomplice. And I put her in there, mid 30s, okay? So uh, in there, I'm describing my character, giving you a little, a little bit of, she, she, so, so you know she's white, she's tall, she's in her 30s, and she's with an accomplice, you know she's the same age. So it's just little, 
just 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 very little description which is enough to move you on right so but the most important thing of seeing it is, is is where we introduce our characters and every time you introduce a character they are all in capital letters all can you see everything there is capital whenever you introduce a character it's in all caps even if your character is identified by a function if your character is a stripper if your character is a cop and they don't have a common name it's still you put that character's name in capital letters okay am i moving too fast or are you you guys clear right now now if your character hmm anybody have a question okay if your character has two names like mine has two names uh she's she's missy and she's mary margaret you can either go missy slash mary margaret or you put it in parentheses next to the name but if your character is pretending to be somebody and this is all in the book so you can read that i'm just telling you if they're pretending to be somebody she would be missy as mary margaret or if his name is john or john is dusty okay so what is going to uh so you have to define your character so what i mean by that is that what sets your character off you already know what sets my character off she hates men who are assholes she she grew up in a home with a stepfather you know who was uh he was drunk he was uh verbally abusive he tried to get sexually abusive inappropriate with her so we know what sets her off she cannot stand men who are jerks so now here's the important thing you cannot introduce a character into your script until you first until they have appeared in your narrative right here that's highlighted you you cannot write anything about your character until you introduce them in capital letters and said just a little bit about them you know and i didn't have to say she's 30s at tall i could have you know i could have said uh, anything she could be um you know she could she could be walk around with a baby doll i mean that you know and that may be something important to her just you want something that's going to captivate people you want to be able to tell them about them without just just going overboard with the writing okay so um so unless you um you know you can't unless you mention it right after the speech they have to be it has to be the first thing after your um, master after your master heading you introduce your characters in capital letters okay now um your your character has to be captivating it has to be fascinating they have to have a clear and specific goal and desire so you know that my character's goal and desire is to save her content to save her order that is her goal and her desire to beat the bad priest and save her order that's what she's up to, okay? And right under here, you see as it says, Missy scrutinizes the place and fist pumps when she spots her prize. She's trying to steal something, okay? So that little line right there, that's called action, all right? And action has to be very succinct as well. Um, you can't, they don't want, if you can do just one line or two lines, that's fine, but but it's driving your character is driving some action is driving your 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 uh your pace it's driving your character to do something she's scrutinizing she's she's looking you know you uh you don't write emotions you write uh what people can see and hear in your action okay so let's just go over this one more time so when you start your uh screenplay fade in you always fade in and it goes in the right margin after your fade in you have your scene heading you tell what this insider is outside, where it is, the in, that's for the camera direction, is it is, is in a building or it's outside of a building. You have uh, whether it's in the, where your location is and whether it's in the daytime or night, it doesn't matter what time of day, it's day. Even if it's dusk or six o'clock, it's night, it's day or night, okay? And after that, what goes beneath the master heading is the introduction of your character. And your character introduction is always in capital letters. Okay. And after that, we have a little bit of dialogue and then we have our action. Any questions so far? Okay. So your characters now. Your character, as I said, has to be 
has to be <laughs> clear and specific. And there has to be a strong opposition to the goal, which leads to a crisis and then to an emotionally satisfying ending. People should be emotionally connected with your character when they read your script. They have to have some emotional connection, okay? And from here, okay, you, so we're getting into the meat of your plot and your plot is gonna derive from your character, your structure derives from your character and your structure and character often develop together. So, so murder wasn't about character development. So there are 10 things that are going that needed to create um, a captivating character. First, you have to have a goal and you have to have opposition. My character's goal is to save her convent, to save her order. The opposition is coming from the priest there. It is also coming from her brother-in-law who finds out she's selling weed and he's trying to, he's trying to make her go to jail because he has beef from her from way back, okay? So for one, we have goal and opposition. Two, motivation. Why does a character want what she wants or what he wants? Your character has some type of motivation. So now you know what my character's motivation is, right? Three, there's a backstory. I told you what my character's backstory is, right? Four, the character has to have a will to act. The character is gonna take some type of willful action against opposition where the outcome is important. So what's her willful action? Her willful action is to fight this priest so that, out, so that she can save her order. That is the outcome. That's what's important to her, okay? Five, Character has to have a point of view and attitudes. So what's your, so, I mean, what's your character's point of view about life, about love, about politics? Is your character happy? Is your character depressed? Is your character grumpy? I mean, my character is just kind of a little bit of a, I wanna say she's a loser, but she's, she's, a, she's a piece of work. I mean, she's, um, she's a piece of work. Um, she's, a, she's more of a rebel, my character. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm you, you tell that not when I say it's by her actions, because as I said, screenplays are um, a visual media, but they, it's, it's about action. It's not, you don't, you, don't, you don't describe emotion, you show it through their actions. You, you relate your story through actions, you move it through action, okay? Six, your character has to have room to grow. This is called a character arc. Uh, it's their emotional journey. Uh, this is the emotional, also an emotional moment for your audience and a moment of realization for your character. Your character has to learn something. They, you know, they can't just be the same, you know, they have to change. Your character is going to be forced to take a new and different uh, action, right? Things are going to get more challenging right up to the showdown and the final action. So for like for Mary Margaret, um, you know, she's used to being uh, a shyster, you know, she's used to stealing and ripping people off, uh, but she changes throughout that story. She becomes more human, all right? And you also want your characters to be believable. Although this is a fictional world, you know, you want to be believable. Uh, I'm sure, have you, have you all seen Avatar, the movie Avatar? Well, you know, that's a totally fictional world, but it's believable, isn't it? Because the, the, it's so well written that you forget that they're aliens because they, they give them, they characterize them. So they give them human traits and human personalities. And that's important. It, whether your, your character is a human, whether it's a cartoon or anything, it has to be believable. And that believability is gonna come in your dialogue. And we're gonna talk about that later. So to make them believable, you have to give them human emotions, human traits, human values, human dimensions, okay? Uh, a thing is characterization of personality. So we're talking about those little things that bring your characters to life and define their personalities and reveal their inner nature. So basically it's anything that makes your character distinct. And they have to have a voice of their own. Like Mary Margaret, she's always walking around with her hand in her hand, she's scratching, she scratches. She's a scratcher, she's nasty. So that, that's, that's just part of who she is. She's nasty, she smokes weed, she drinks. Uh, she does a lot of stuff. So. Um, that just tells you, just based on, and I'm not telling, I'm just showing you what she does. I mean, I'm not telling you, I'm showing you. Scripts are, it's like, show me, don't tell me. You sh I'm showing you who she is. So you know exactly who she is based on what she does. So it, um, 
for example, I know I can't. What's that movie? Uh, Spike Lee movie. Um, you know, with Radio Raheem, he always carried a, a boombox. So you, you, you know, he didn't have to tell you anything about him. You saw in that movie that music was important to him. That's showing. That's how you show a character. You don't tell it. You show it. Okay. And also, like a Charlie Brown pig pen. We know pig pen is dirty. We know he stinks. They don't have to tell us that. You see it. You understand? You see it. Movies are about they're visual. You show. You don't. You don't write it. You show it. That's how you move your story along. Okay. Okay. And number nine. Uh, a writer who cares. You have to take time to know your characters, to develop your characters, to give them unique voices. If I, if, 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 if I close my eyes and someone's reading your script to me, I should be able to tell what character is talking because they have distinct voices. And that all comes with character research. All characters, there's different. Mary, there's a, we have Mary Margaret. We have a sister Barbara. She looks like a man, but she's really a woman, but she speaks differently. We have a, a character, Amos. He's kind of like a surfer dude. And I'll let you know that just based on when I introduce his character, he wears like a necklace with a shark tooth. So you know that that's important to him. So, um, but they all have different, they speak differently. The writing's different. I mean, it's just different. Um, and also, uh, um, you know, you want to research them, uh, you know, go observe people, explore your character's backgrounds, if they have certain idiosyncrasies, like in my uh, screenplay, Mary Margaret does not get along with her brother-in-law, Barry. Barry is Jewish, so I took, I researched some um, uh, Jewish jargon, you know, mashuganas and stuff like that, stuff, just things that uh, anybody who's Jewish would understand, um, that, that, that jargon, when he, when he, when they go back and forth and they jibe each other, you know, he's speaking from from a perspective of him being Jewish. So do your research. And also you have to have a strong supporting cast. In any well-written story, relationships are emphasized. So most screenplays feature about five to seven um, main characters with other supporting characters. Each character has a goal, a desire, a need, and an intention. When my Mary Margaret moves to Texas, she meets these two clowns. And um, I mean, they're really clowns. Uh, uh, they're, they're different, they're, they're dummies, but they have different voices, but they want to get rich too. Um, and so they don't mind helping her out, but you know, they have their own little lies and they have little, little, little things going on. I don't, I don't emphasize it much, but you just get it from the, from the dialogue. You get to understand who they are. All right. And uh, let's see, these extra characters, they also give rise to subplots that are going to create complications to sustain the second act. So you want to create contrast with your supporting cast. So everybody in there, she has comp not just conflict. I mean, she gets along with them, but there's some they 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 create conflict too. They always, you know, every every story has a stone. Once you think something's getting resolved, then something else happens. You know, there's always uh, there's always a moment of conflict in a movie. There, movies are conflict. You know that, right? It's all conflict. It's all conflict that needs to be resolved. So your other characters should. Uh, should um, answer some form of conflict, all right? So are we all clear on our characters and what you do? So I'm just gonna go back again because I'm like this. So when we have our story, you start with you fade in, right? And then you have your uh, master heading, which is gonna tell us whether the story is inside or outside, internal or external. Then that's for your camera angle. Then you're going to have your location, wherever your scene is taking place at the time, and then whether it's day or night. So that's simple. And then we introduce our characters, which are always in capital letters. And, you know, for, for me, you know, I, and I really didn't have to put her, but, you know, put her age and stuff, but from, I had in mind a certain character, Jane Lynch. So in my mind, my character was white. So, you know, it's just, it just depends on what you want to do. All right. And so, you know, your character has to be dynamic, your character has to be believable and all this kind of thing. So, oh, okay, so are we good there? On character, Myrna, did I answer your question? Oh, that's right, do the right thing. Did I answer your question, Myrna? Yes. All right, all right, so we're gonna move on to, so dialogue, so, so I have my character, you see here, the female accomplishes. she's like, let's go, this place is dead, and she's like, yeah, so that's our dialogue. So let's talk about dialogue. So dialogue is not 
real life speech. It only sounds like it. Uh, it's edited speech and it's organized speech. It has direction, but it also retains the style of real speech, right? Um, it doesn't have to be realistic. It just has to be believable. And it should sound conversational, all right? Uh, it also has to be, and you see here, I don't have a lot of stuff written down here. I don't have a lot of dialogue. I don't have to have a lot of dialogue because you learn to be a wordsmith when you uh, are writing. And uh, I talk, it remind me to tell you, I use, I use a master writer uh, software. If I want to find a different word, if I don't want to say, so if someone's running, I don't want to say they're running. They may be sprinting. They may be traipsing. They may be, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, you know I, I love synonyms. I just go through tons of synonyms because I don't want to sound common. So you don't want your writing to be common either. So here's our dialogue. It has to be lean and try to keep it to one or two lines if you can, because people need to be, people need to understand what's being heard the first time that they hear it. Unlike a novel, like if I'm writing a book, if you miss them, you can go back and reread, but when, when it's on the big screen, they can't go back. You can't be in a movie theater and, and, and uh, go back and listen to something. So your, your writing, your dialogue has to be so concise, all right? Uh, avoid long speeches and also refrain from character having to say another person's name. I can't, just don't do that. If, I'm, if Mary Margaret is, if Missy is talking to Myrna, she's like to say, Myrna, blah, blah, you know she's talking to Myrna. That is so redundant. Never, ever, ever have a character mention a person's name unless they're screaming to them to, uh, and they're about to get hit by a bus or something. But never, when they're having a conversation, I mean, when you're having conversations with people, you don't, you don't mention their names, right? No. So you don't, don't do that when you write. Do not address another character by their name. We, we already know who they're talking to. Um, okay, so that's typically, again, I'm, I'm going to be a little repetitious. There's always some type of conflict or competition between characters. So when you think about, think about the motivation behind your speech. Your screenplay is nothing but conflict. Conflict, conflict, conflict. So... Think about the motivation behind your conflict when you're writing your story, all right? And don't think too hard. Just write from your heart. And remember, all writing is rewriting. I cannot tell you the number of times I've rewritten this script. I might read it again, and I might take something out. Every time I read one of my scripts, they become a leaner. I take stuff out. So all writing is rewriting. You, you're always going to go back to what you wrote, but just get it out. And if there's a better and more succinct way of you expressing yourself and trying to convey it, do it and make it lean, all right? and know your characters well enough that they speak with a voice of their own. Uh, and like I said, if I close my eyes and you read your script, I should be able to say, oh, that's John, that's, that's Myrna, that's Michael, that's David, that's Janae. I should be able to be able to hear it. And also one thing that you can do is when you've written your screenplay, you can, um, I'll probably go back over this again, record it, listen to it, or you could have a table. I love having tables. I love having people come over and, and, and do scenes from my screen. It's really fun, but we'll talk about that later. So again, don't think too hard. Just get it out and know your characters well enough. They speak, that they have a voice of their own. And voice, there are eight elements to voice. It's the text or the words that you see on the screen, the subtext or the meaning of the words, grammar, and syntax, vocabulary, accents, original influences, slang, uh, professional jargon, and speaking style, including rhythm and sentence length. Like uh, um, in my in this character, one of the characters he has a he uses a a, a voice uh, modulator. It's his grandmother because he's using it. People think that he has a problem until later in the script. He's just doing it because he's an asshole because he likes the way his voice sounds. Or like Rain Man, for instance. Rain Man, you all know that uh, Dustin Hoffman and um, what's his name? Um, Tom Cruise. Rain Man, he had a rhythm to his speech because he's autistic, but he had a rhythm and he had a certain sentence length. He had a certain speaking style. So, you know, you think about that too. Uh, and it will, it will flow to you. It'll start to come to you. Once, you. once you start to develop a relationship with your characters, then um, you'll develop speech for them that's different from your other characters. But here are 
when you're writing your dialogue, okay, uh, before I go on, are we all clear? Does anybody have any questions? Is it making sense to you? Because I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay. Here are seven things to avoid when you are writing dialogue. Obvious exposition is one. And that means this happens when your characters seem to be speaking more to the audience than to each other. An example that he uses in his book is like, and this is ridiculous, but it's like, it's like when you're trying too hard to make the audience know something and it's really, uh, really something that doesn't need to be, to be in there. Uh, hang on a second, I'm sorry. Say for instance, what's it using the, and uh, one character says, do you know what today is? And he's like, it's our anniversary. Yes, our anniversary is May 10th. And yes, do you remember uh, what we did our anniversary? Yeah, we went to Hawaii. But why would you want to put that in the script? That is, that is useless dialogue. That's called obvious exposition. You're doing that more for the audience. You know, character, you, care, you know that. I mean, the characters, they, they, they're married. They know when they got married. They know where they had the honeymoon. We don't need to know that. Your audiences need to know that. That is obvious exposition. Don't do stuff like that. Stick to a stick to dialogue that's going to move your story. Stick to some action. Stick to some good stuff. Not little silly stuff like that. And then overwriting is the second thing that you want to avoid. Um, you use more words or ideas than necessary to convey what you mean. So if you look at this script, I don't have a lot of words. There are not a lot of words here in the script. Because nobody's going to want to read it. I won't want to read it. Nobody's going to want to read it. You cannot, you can't, you cannot pay somebody to, to read your script. Uh, okay. If you have too many, if, if it's overwritten. Third is exaggeration. You don't want to exaggerate your characters. I know what I mean. It's like, if you have a, a, a character, like, uh, I watched General Hospital. Sam is always crying in General Hospital. They do a horrible job with her. I mean, you don't want a patient that's always crying. I always cussing. The only time I think that F bombs worked was in um what's that movie? Uh with Al Pacino. Um God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh come on, Michaela, I know you know. What's the movie with Al Pacino? Well, he's a gangster and, and he must have said he must have dropped Scarface. The, Scarface. He, he dropped the F bomb a million times, but it worked for that movie, but you don't want to exaggeration that worked for that movie you want to avoid exaggeration unless you you know I, martin scorsese and he can do that but you can so avoid uh, ex uh exaggeration in your dialogue for everyday pleasantries hi how are you doing how's your dog how's your grandma how don't put stuff like that in your script that is unnecessary. That is not story. You want meat. You want story. You want something that's going to drive it. Everyday pleasantries will not drive your story. And I had a friend, um, he wanted me to read a script. And uh, he started off, he had his character, he had a dog. And he, you know, he, he leaves his apartment, he goes and he's, he stops at the, at, to get a newspaper. He's talked to everybody when he's getting there, he stops him as a group of men and he gave everybody like 10 men, they gave them all a name and they all had conversation. He, he had probably four or five stops and there were probably like 30 or 40 characters on his way there and they, it was all pleasantries. And I thought that, and he didn't want to listen to me. So I said, I can't help you with your script because that, I, I think I read about 20 pages and it never got to, it never got to uh, the setup. I didn't know what his setup was because he was the whole, about 20 pages of it was him walking and talking to people. And I never, I didn't know what the story was. So no pleasantries, no hi, how you doing? Nobody give a damn. Okay, unnecessary repetition. So don't, don't be repetitious. Uh, and there, and uh, one thing to avoid is not having room for subtext. Here, the characters are saying precisely what they're thinking or feeling. The subtext is stated rather than implied. So you're better off having characters speak metaphorically or beating around the bush. So like, um, for instance, uh, um, we know that instead of um, saying that Mary Margaret doesn't like the priest and he's a butthole, we see what she does to him. She gets in the confessional and she farts in the confessional. She goes in there and she eats the Holy Communion. She drinks up the wine at her leisure. Uh, that's, that's subtext. That's, 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 
I'm metaphorically describing her disdain for him. I'm showing you how she disrespects him, okay? I'm not telling you, I'm showing you. That's subtext. So we have to have a little subtext, okay? We have to, we have to do things metaphorically and not like we would in a novel or on a stage play. And the seventh thing is not to have decorative dialogue or um, unoriginal speech. And I mean avoiding cliches and lines that you have seen or heard in other movies. Don't, don't do that. So again, so, so if you want to improve your dialogue after you've written, after you've done your first write or your rewrite, record it. Listen to, listen to yourself, listen to your story. Or do a table read. Invite your friends over and assign characters and you guys act it out. You know, over wine and, and food. I've done that and we had a blast. So, and I would have them do that and I would sit back and listen to them and I was like, oh, I have to take this out and do this. Or I would see where I could improve my characters or improve my story. So that, um, that's really important. And there's another thing that I, I want to talk about. There's something called parentheticals. So if you see right here, like Missy, I wouldn't advise doing that, but they used to call them Riley's because anytime initially they would say, oh, Riley means that a patient did something, uh, patient, I'm sorry, I'm a doctor, that your character did something Riley. Um, they're useful when you want to suggest subtext or the attitude of a character, but it's usually better to write it in your action. Um, like if I want to say, uh, if she said, keep your voice down, and I, if I under it, I put a parenthesis, I said angrily, Really, I wouldn't do that because you ought to know whether or not your character is mad or not. And that's really up to the, the interpretation of the actor. They're going to, they're going to, if you write, if, a, if an actor or actress sees it, they're going to ignore it because they're going to interpret your screenplay the way they want to. Just like when we had our master class with uh, Darius McQuarrie, uh, it was really interesting to see. We used um, some sides from two different scripts. So one was, I wrote this one in a drama. And it was really interesting to see how people uh, portrayed those characters. Some people saw M Mary Margaret as an old black woman. Uh, some people saw her as a young woman. Uh, it was really interesting. So, um, you know, it's better to write uh, action creatively um, and dialogue that is directed to a specific action than to try to, you know, write it in parentheses that your character's upset. And another thing that you don't want to do, I'll tell you now, is exclamation points. You don't, don't, don't put those in your dialogue. Like if you want to emphasize something, you underline it. If, if you want a word to pop, you underline it. Do not put exclamation points in your thing, but you'll learn that in this screenwriting Bible. Okay, so that's part of the gist of it. And then at the end of your, in the far right margin, when you've written your screenplay, you're going to write, either the end, fade out, or fade to black. I, I like the end. Some people like fade out, some people like, uh, uh, like to, um, fade to black. So before we move on now, so we talked about script mechanics. I taught you about how to open it with your fade in. I taught you about scene headings, camera angle, the location, whether it's day or night. I talked talk to you about uh, how to introduce your characters, about your dialogue and your action, these things, you know, um, if the character's doing something, action is what they see and what they hear. You never write what your character is feeling. Never, ever, ever write what your character is feeling. That doesn't happen here. You show it. You don't tell it. So whenever I, uh, like right here, I have um, Missy stares down a large vent. Mother Superior, um, uh, I can't, I my glasses. Mother Superior stares up at her. That's action. I'm not telling you how they feel. I, you don't, you never write emotion in a screenplay. Never, ever, ever. When you write these little things here, that's action. That's action. Something's happening. It's either what you see and what you hear, or uh, usually what the character doesn't know. If, if somebody's coming up behind them, they're going to kill him. Uh, you wouldn't say, uh, she's so mad, she wants to kill him. You wouldn't say that. You'd show it. Uh, I would say, Myrna's sitting on a couch. Mary creeps into her house. She sneaks up behind her with a knife and plunges the knife into her back. That's action. That's different from saying she wants to kill her. I'm showing you. 
that she has intention to kill her. I'm not telling you, I'm showing you, all right? So are we good here about the script mechanics, about the scene headings, the actions, the character, the dialogue? If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. All right. So you have a, I have an idea for a script. Uh, question? Yes. No, no you're, doing, go ahead. you're doing a good job for what I'm going to say. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yes, this is really good, Michaela. One question about transitions. Um, how do you, can you just give um, a quick, you mentioned it, but what, what are some of the words or what would the, um, I think it's the um, headings be? Okay. How do you move from, how do you move? To the okay. next scene. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay, let's go up here. Okay. So uh, I'll tell you this. I start out Mary Margaret. She's the character in the store and they're stealing. Okay. That's my first scene. So she's stealing the store. They get caught and they run and they go into a, uh, they run into a building. So my scene went from My scene went from internal for day and they ran into the building. So my scene switched from internal bingo hall out of a night. So they, anytime, anytime your character goes to another place, you change the scene heading. So they were in a thrift store first, okay? She got busted stealing, so they had to leave. They had to run. They ran into a bingo hall. So my next scene was internal bingo hall night. They, they climbed up into something and um, some, that's how she got familiar with the nuns. They were, they, you know, so anytime, anytime your character, you move the character some, to another scene, you change your scene heading. So let's say, um, walk me through your day. You got up this morning, you, you got up this morning, you were in your bedroom. It's internal bedroom day you got up you went to the shower you took a bath that's your next scene internal bathroom day you got dressed you left your house you got in your car you start talking on the phone internal car day. then you went to work um internal law firm day you decided to have lunch outside external Part day. So that's how you move your scene. Wherever you are, that's a new scene. Okay, my daughter has a question about describing that scene. Like, um, how, how detailed do you need to be to describe the building? You don't. You what don't. Is it? See, it's the building. It's whatever, it's whatever they're going to shoot it. So if you're in a, if you're at, uh, it would just be. Uh, okay, because this is a difference. This is what I was trying to tell her. This is a, that's a different script. That's a shooting script. Well, a shooting script um, is not going to, it doesn't matter what your building is. If you're an attorney, it's a law, it could be an uh, internal law office day. It's a law office. So they're going to make, they're going to, they're going to design a set to be a law office. All right. So you don't have to describe it. No, you do not describe, you do not describe it. All I need to know is where it is. It's a law office. Now, if there's something important that's going to move your story about the office, um, you can say uh, male, 20s, um, uh, desolate office. If it's important that your office is run down, that you want to use one adjective to describe that office, if that's important in your, uh, in your narrative. So if I say internal law office day, male uh, rush, uh, rushes into a uh, dilapidated office, and picks up the phone or she does something or slams something down. So if it's important what the aesthetics of your office look like, then you want to use one adjective to describe it. If that's, impo if that's important to your story. If, if it's a luxurious office and that's important to your office, then, you know, just use an adjective to describe it to give us an idea of what it looks like. But you don't have to go, you don't have to go berserk on the description. Did I answer you?
Did that answer your question, Mel? Yes, Michaela, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's talk about software. Okay, so you have an idea for a movie. You're going to outline your movie. You're gonna say, okay, I have this idea. I know what it is. I wanna write about uh, a prostitute who marries an alien. So, so the beginning, my, 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 my um, prostitute is gonna be, I know she's gonna be out there hooking. She's gonna uh, see a, a spaceship. Aliens gonna come down. They're gonna, um, you know, first gonna be scared that they're gonna strike this relationship, she's gonna fall in love with them, and then there's gonna be some conflict. Maybe the other aliens don't like her and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I'm gonna say that, and then how's it gonna end? Um, they're gonna end up having some type of war with the aliens, and in the end, they end up being together or something. You know, I'm gonna outline my story, and then I'm gonna start to write it. Write it. And I know that my story has three acts. It has a, uh, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is always act one. It's usually fit the first 15 to 25 pages, sometimes 30, but that's your setup. You're setting up your story. The second part, act two, that is the meat of your story. That's where your major conflict is coming. That's where the, 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 the heart of your story is, is in act two, all right? And then in act three is where we have our climax, our crisis, and then we have our resolve. So that's gonna be again, the last 25 pages, all right? So we have our we have our structure. We, we know we're going to make our outline. We know how to make our script. It has three acts and a certain amount of pages. Every feature film is ninety to one hundred and twenty pages. If you're writing a short film, it is anywhere from one to thirty pages. All right, but still, it has a three act structure. Every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you have this idea. So where how are you going to write it? There are two types of software that you can use that are industry keys that he talks about in uh, the screenwriter's bible um, they are um, movie magic screenwriter and final draft i happen to have both i really really like uh, i started out writing a movie movie magic screenwriter um, and formatting formatting is a key element of screenwriting it's inseparable from it you cannot nobody's going to read your script unless it is formatted properly and that means that they're this, for, this screenwriting software is going to have, it's already going to have the right margins, the right tabs, the right line spacing, the right pagination. I mean, pagination, I mean numbers. These numbers, I didn't put those numbers on there. The software put those numbers on there. I didn't do that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really important. Uh, it's, formatting is the language of the screenwriting art. And if you do not have the proper format, they're going to take your shit and they're going to throw it right in the trash. Nobody's going to read it. So it's important to have the proper, uh, it's not, this is not the only one. And there's only one, he, he, it, he, there's one Microsoft program that he advises you not to use. But um, the, and the difference, you can tell whether you've written it, don't, whether you've written it in Movie Magic and, uh, or Final Draft is because of the, the, um, the title page, the way the title pages are. They're different in both, but uh, most people prefer to have stuff in Final Draft, and some people places may even ask you to to use that specific software. But again, it's safe to use the software because, as I said, formatting is a key element. Your formatting comes from your screenwriting software, and if it is formatted improperly, no one is going to. They're going to toss your stuff. It's going to. They they're not going to take you seriously at all. So, um, again, key points formatting proper software it has to be clean it has to be concise um if you're not writing a novel you are not writing a stage play you are writing a script it's just totally different script language is is visual it's action it's all action and conflict so uh you just have to learn how to write in a manner that that alludes to action and conflict all right and um he tells you in here how to sell your script and stuff, but I'm going to tell you two places. And this is how I met Jeanette. Uh, the really awesome place for um, people who want to network with other writers. One of them is Stage 32, and the other is Roadmap Writer. Stage 32 is free. Uh, this is how I actually, my first 
short film that I wrote, uh, I met a, the guy who directed for me from Stage 32, but Stage 30, Stage 32, number 32, I have it on your thing. Um, this is wonderful. You can, you, you, you can get any kind of help there. But what, the thing I like about that is that you can pitch your um, screenplays to major players in the industry. I mean, the Paramount Films, the Disney, it, whatever genre you're writing, they'll, they'll say, hey, look, we have these people here this weekend. And usually the pitch, you can do a, a Zoom pitch or a Skype pitch, or you can do a verb, you can write it. You don't have to be too shy to, to, to talk to them. You could do either, but you can pitch your work to them. And if they like it, they say, hey, send me your script. Um, and you know, you're in, but never ever send anybody, you, know, you don't want to pitch it if you don't have a script available, but that's a good resource. But I would join it anyway, because um, you just never know. You other actors, writers, directors, producers, there are all kinds of people that you can, uh, you, you can meet on stage 32. And Roadmap Writers, the guy who started that, when he started out with um, stage 32, and um, he, he formed Roadmap Writers. It's pretty similar. Uh, you can join for free, but they do have um, levels of membership if you want to join. But uh, if you want to pitch your work, it's still not at 30, $35, but it's worth it because you get in front of actual uh, big, uh, yeah. you get in front of um, um, these huge production companies and they're just looking for stuff. So, and sometimes even when, if you've written a book, they will, they're looking to um, adapt um, books into um, screenplays too. So if there's, both of them are really good to join. So I would suggest um, joining either. Okay. So do you have any questions? I know you missed a little bit, Kim. Uh, is there anything? I think one thing you missed, Kim, um, that we talked about the types of scripts. If you might, if you've never written a script before, you all, me too, we're writing spec scripts. And you're writing a spec script on a speculation that someone is going to read your work and buy it. And there's another thing called a shooting script. So shooting scripts have direction, more direction for the product, for their producer and the crews and director. Uh, but once they buy your script, they're going to change it into a shooting script. And trust me, it's not that you're going to be pissed off because they will take your work and it'll be unrecognizable. They're going to make, they're going to take it and make it what they want to, unless you have a direct hand in it, unless you like written a, a novel, like, uh, what's that vampire movie with those, um, that cute uh, tween vampire movie. Um, she was on set. She actually had a. She was actually in the movie, so she she was able to uh, to have a lot of say over what they do. What's that movie? Twilight. That series. Yeah, thank you, Twilight. Uh, okay, my 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 name take is on it. So you know, if you're adapting from a book, normally you may get to do that. But also, if you are writing a TV pilot you get control over everything. Nobody tells no director anything. Like uh, Shonda Rhimes, she is in control over everything. That is the beauty of writing for television. When it's your shit, it's your shit. Nobody tells you what to do. You have absolute control over everything. So nobody's going to take your work and make it what they want to. You do that. So that is the beauty of writing for TV. But movies are different. They're going to take your script and they're going to make it into whatever they want to make it into. So, so there you have it. The basics of, basics of screenwriting.